Let's go over how I make my computer write this music for me. And this. And more coming right up. Hi, I'm Dennis. I make procedurally generated music. That is, I handwrite costume algorithms that my computer uses to concatenate thousands of recordings of individual notes that in the end hopefully resembles music. Mostly of the metal variety. So let's jump right in. Small disclaimer, I'm trying to make these videos as easy to understand as possible. So hopefully going into this you won't need any programming knowledge or even any songwriting knowledge to follow along. I made this video a while ago that gives an overview of the program and how it's structured. But you don't need to watch that to understand this video. The short version is, by using carefully selected pieces of logic and randomization, my computer picks out sound samples from a library of thousands of files and pieces it together to make music. If you still want to watch that video to get a deeper understanding of what I'm talking about here, you can click in the upper right corner. But anyway, let's start with one of my favorite parts right here, that also happens to be really simple. So this is a really simple algorithm really. It essentially only contains two moving parts, big open note four string chords and muted notes in between them. So the first thing I do is to randomize a few chords. The process for this is really simple. We want to construct a chord out of four different notes that fit together. Every song has a scale that it's written in. That is, a set of notes that works well together. So first I decide how many different chords the section should have. Either four or eight chords. Pick that random. Then I fill a list with that many chords. Every chord is four notes. So I start with picking a root note at random from the current scale. From that I then construct a three string power chord from that root note. That is the second and third note in the chord will be seven semitones up and a whole octave up respectively. Then I spice it up a bit by adding a flare note by picking a new note from the current scale at random again and raising the octave up of that note until it's higher than the highest note of the underlying power chord. So this new note doesn't clash with the free string power chord formation we have going on. Then I pick again at random how often the chord should change. This can be either one bar, two bars or four bars. The muted notes is just this chord formation but without a couple of the higher notes. So that's the melodic structure right there. All we have to do now is determine the rhythmic structure. So we need two bits of information for every strum of the chord. The length of that strum and whether or not it should be the full open four note chords or the truncated muted version of that chord. Which is really simple, we just randomize it. I generate the pattern with these bits of information that loops a couple of times. So it sounds like it has a structure. And for every piece of this pattern, it randomizes whether it should be the full four note chord or the muted version, and also its length. So now we have both the melodic structure and the rhythmic structure needed to just tell the computer to play it to us. Let's listen to it once again. I hope you can see how a computer would write this section. And you might have heard that there was a solo on top of that section this time. If you want to learn more about my algorithms for writing solos, you can check this video out. But alright, let's head on to something a bit spicier. Let me introduce you to my polyrhythm creator. It's not actually a physical thing that I can take a picture of, but um, here's a picture of the cold class. So the idea with this is, let's say you have a riff. This riff contains a bunch of discernible parts, logical groupings of notes within that riff. Say that you take these subsections of that riff, cut them out and then you put them in a the bag. You shake the bag and then you grab random subsections a couple of times to create a new riff. That is essentially what the polyrhythm creator does. 
So in my algorithm, I have detailed a bunch of nodes that logically make sense together and given them to the polyrhythm creator. The polyrhythm creator then proceeds to shuffle that collection of riff parts and grabs a fixed number of these parts and pieces together a new riff. Every one of these parts have randomization built into them as well. So every time this algorithm is run, there are slight variations to every part of the riff that goes in the bag. The algorithms that uses the polyrhythm creator are actually quite simple, because all they do is detail a bunch of random riff parts and then the polyrhythm creator does the rest. God bless gent where something sounding chaotic and picked at random is a good thing, I guess. But anyway, let's listen to one of these algorithms in section. So as you can hear, while the algorithm definitely has a certain sound to it that is carried over every time a section is generated using this algorithm, it's still pretty varied. My approach to having variation in this program is not necessarily to try to make the most advanced algorithms that can produce a huge variety of sections, but rather to stack the elements that can differ on top of each other. So let's take this section for example. Every song randomizes the tuning of the song, but also the scale of the song, as well as if it has a triplet feel or not. If the song has a triplet feel, the notes this algorithm lays down is in 8th triplet notes, otherwise it's 16th notes. The algorithm details a bunch of parts of riffs, all with their own internal randomization, that gets fed to the polyrhythm creator, that shuffles the parts and picks them at random. The polyrhythm creator has a fixed number of parts that it will use to generate, so some parts will not get picked every time the algorithm is run. Then on top of that I have multiple separate algorithms that add drums to the generated guitar riff which can randomize everything from which symbol it is mainly played on, how often that symbol changes, how many ghost notes are thrown in, etc. The drum algorithms also uses multiple other algorithms to generate the drum fills as well. On top of that, every section has some ambience and FX algorithms run on it to generate some background sounds. So all in all, any one of these doesn't necessarily contribute a huge amount of variety on their own, but together, the number of variations and combinations grows exponentially. And that all stems from just one algorithm, and I have about a hundred of them in my program now. But alright, let's do one last one. Let's do an algorithm that's mostly centered around one of my drum algorithms. After having listened to The Contortionist intensely a while back, I decided that I wanted a section that resembled the part that comes in at around 303 in their song Language 1 Intuition. The section is fairly straightforward. The most complicated part there is the drums, otherwise the guitar and bass more or less just play simple chords. The first thing this section does is randomize the time signature. This is fairly simple, it just grabs one at random from a predetermined list of odd time signatures. So the drums here will play in 16th notes if the song has a regular feel, otherwise it's triplet 8th notes. So the algorithm here is fairly simple. For every bar it randomizes the amount of kick hits and snare hits and also the spaces between them. On the start of every bar is a kick and an accent symbol picked at random from a predetermined list. The kicks and snares can overlap and be played on top of each other. And technically they have their own sub-level polyrhythmic time signatures that loops within the bar since the number of kicks and snares and also the spaces between them are completely randomized, if that makes sense. Between the snare hits are one of two hits placed at random, either a snare ghost note or a beat symbol. The beat symbol is picked at random from a predetermined list of fitting symbols. There can only be one beat symbol in a row, and only two snare ghost notes in a row. Otherwise it's all fair game. It's all just kind of random, within certain degrees at least. And then it places a drum fill at the end, with a randomized length. The implementation for the fills right now is extremely simplified. I'd love to make a deep dive and improve my drum fills sometime soon. Maybe make a video on that topic also. Let me know if you would want to see that. Anyway, back to the section. The drums are in place now, so all we need to do is add the bass and the guitar. The guitar just plays four string chords, generated from the same algorithm I detailed earlier in the video. 
These chords just place at the beginning of each bar and can be either the rhythm guitar tone or a clean tone. The bass just plays the root note of that chord. And then a bunch of ambience and stuff is layered on top of that section. And we have a chill, proggy feeling section in the program. So this is basically just a handful of quick examples on how I construct my algorithms. There's no AI involved, although I would love to explore that approach in the future. It's all just handcrafted algorithms tweaked to my liking. It all just starts with me asking myself, how can I explain to a computer how to play a certain kind of section, and then really break it down. Kinda like how you would explain to a friend how to write a certain type of riff, just more detailed. In painful detail, actually, because a computer can't really reason about the stuff it's composing and make meaningful decisions on its own. It needs a lot of help. My point is, I guess, there's no magic going on here. I have just spent a lot of time on it. I truly believe anyone with the most surface level of knowledge in coding could open up something like a game engine and start writing something like this. And I really hope me sharing a couple of examples on how I approach things could give people ideas and inspire people to do something similar, maybe in a different genre. Because this is truly fun once you get it up and running. Just doing something as simple as randomizing a BPM and then program something to lay down a simple drum beat with kick on every beat, snare on two and four, and a hi-hat every beat can feel exciting. And once you have that, you can start expanding on it. Randomize an accent symbol that plays instead of the hi-hat at the start of every fourth beat or so. Add in some bass guitar. Maybe it can just play an open string in eighth notes. Once you have that, maybe every third note or something like that can be some other note pulled at random from some scale. Maybe add a guitar on top of it that plays the same as the bass guitar. Maybe it even plays some power chords. The possibilities are endless. But anyway, that's all for this video. Thanks everyone for tuning in. See you next time.